you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to later. I think it's such a marvel and a tribute to all these different musicians. There's great spirit of the room. It's a great level of music. All these people playing exactly the same, more or less exactly the same thing together. After all, there are only 13 notes in the chromatic scale. And I promise that you'll be hearing all of them on tonight's show. So who are those fabulous guests who will be playing all of those exquisite notes for us? They all are from recording their album, um, their third album, all the way from Scotland, power popular music, Teenage Fan Club, ladies and gentlemen. Also, you'll notice the strange group of wirelesses on my piano here. Is it a John Cage musical experiment? We'll find out a little later in the programme. Keeping up that normal international edge that we always like to keep up, we have um, a fantastic artist performing uh, from her folk tribute album, um, Other Voices, Other Rooms, all the way from Texas, Nancy Griffith, ladies and gentlemen, and the Blue Moon Orchestra. <laughs> London is about as international as I am myself, and performing a song from the Heart of London album, Gallon Drunk, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Television, as we know, can be disappointingly full of trickery. We're not going to get too much trickery on this show, but what we are going to get is a little bit of footage of somebody that was here last week, in this very room, but they aren't here tonight. Unfortunately, uh, we wish he was, but he's gone back to America, all the way back to Chicago. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Buddy Guy. Whether singing the, uh, with legend, the legendary Led Zeppelin or in his very successful solo career, he has often been imitated but never equaled. Ladies and gentlemen, performing Calling to You from his latest LP, Fate of Nations, Mr. Robert Plant. <laughs>
indeed, Robert Plant. Um, he shall be back just a little bit later. Now, back to the uh, mystery of, about the different wirelesses. There have been a number of great songs written about this type of thing. And fortunately, um, we've got a world exclusive because uh, our next uh, performers are doing a song. And the title of it is Radio. Please welcome Teenage Fan Club. <laughs> Thanks very much, Teenage Fan Club. More from them a little bit later. Well, the first week that this show was on, I'd been at the Albert Hall. The next week, uh, we had Leonard Cohen sitting right here, and he'd been playing for the Albert Hall. And almost, we're sort of psychically all connected, because um, our next artist, she's at the Albert Hall uh, this week. Uh, she's going to be now performing a John, Pry uh, John Prine song, who's also been in this room. You see, it all, it all connects up in a strange web, doesn't it, at the end there? Uh, and she's going to be performing Speed of the Sound of Loneliness. Please welcome back, Nancy Griffith. Uh, 
Nancy Griffith, and she'll be back uh, a little bit later. I think we should now change the mood altogether. <laughs> The next guest, although he was filmed earlier, is one of the greatest living bluesmen that there are. He came in, was a perfectly charming man, and when he played, the spirit of the blues thrust through the whole studio, all the way from Chicago. He's got a, a new album, uh, and uh, feels like rain. Uh, please welcome Mr. Buddy Guy. <laughs> Well, it's a pleasure to have a beautiful, proper business guitarist. When did you, when did you first start playing? Uh, actually, I, I started out trying to uh, make a guitar before I knew what a guitar was. I had never seen it. My family was so far from the country. I was like 16 when I saw the first electric light. 
So I, my first guitar was a rubber band. And uh, from a rubber band to a piece of screen wire and to a guitar with one wire. <laughs> so it's been a while. But what was the first thing that you started to learn then? Well, I was uh, um, actually running all of my sisters and brothers out of the house one day. And uh, I kept the guitar in my hand. And uh, I went outside and, and lied down on, a, on, a, on a, what they call a wood pile we had there. And, uh, and uh, oh, I'm sorry, my guitar's not doing something right. <laughs> oh, that's it is. And uh, I woke up in a daze playing. Uh, and that was John Lee Hooker tune, yeah, Boogie yeah. Chiller. And from that, I played it for six and a half hours because I thought if I moved my fingers, I never <laughs> would get it never back again. Never remember the riff. Right, right, Fantastic. right. And you can't, did you listen to Lightning Hopkins as well? Was that a yes? And well, after my, my parents finally got a, a radio, then I could pick up. A, first of all, believe me or not, it was country and western, because at that point in time, the radio station was playing everybody. You could hear a Lou Rawls with the Pilgrim Travel, which was a spiritual. You would hear uh, Woody Herman, then you would hear uh, a Lightning Hopkins, and then you would hear Eddie Arnold, any of those great western guitar players. Mm -hmm. So I was like grabbing every minute of it, and I wasn't leaving anybody out at all. And what sort of year would this have been when you were first listening? Uh, this had to be in 1950, mm -hmm. 51, 49, 50, and 51. Yeah. That's when B.B. and Muddy and them also came out about the same time my parents got the phonograph. And where, 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 you, where were you living at that time? A little place called Letchworth, Louisiana. Right. And my mom got, and dad got the first electric light, one light hanging in the center, center of the room at, of the house. Wow, that's yeah. extraordinary. Still was chopping wood to make our, our energy, the heat and stuff in the fireplace. I got one in my house now, because that's why you say never get the country out of me. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. And Dee, could you give us a little bit of a lightning hop? You was turning a little bit of a country blues guitar. A little lightning hop and go. If I don't find what I'm looking for, people, I ain't gonna, ain't gonna let my airplane down. Wow, that's <laughs> delicious. That's <laughs> Thank you. Lovely. Thank you so much. And, and so when was it you didn't decided that you were going to be a professional musician? Uh, one day in Chicago, uh, going on my third day without any food, trying to get a dime to call my mom to get back to Louisiana, and I walked into this famous club, which 708 Club, which had the late great Muddy Waters, Junior Wells, Little Waltz, and all of them playing, and a stranger drug me in there by the wrist like some little kid two years old and said, I got this little black so-and-so, you can play. I went up and played, and I came off, and it was asking me, who was I, went so on, blah, blah, we, and I said, I'm just hungry, man, buy me a sandwich. Somebody went and called Muddy. And 20 minutes later, somebody slapped, pow, pow. I'm, I'm mud, and I'm saying, like, ears ringing. I'm saying, I'm getting mugged now. My guitar's gone, you know, because I wouldn't sell my guitar for nothing in the world. Yeah. Come to find out, it was Muddy Waters. And he uh, bought me a big salami sandwich and set me in the back of the car and said, don't ever think about leaving Chicago, and I'm still there. Mm -hmm. I had to listen to him because that was one of my dreams I wanted to do was meet him. Yeah. Uh, matter of fact, just watch him play. I'd never seen him play, but then I'd come up with him slapping me. I said, "I won't wash this face for a while." Right. Did yeah. you learn? Did you learn much from Muddy Waters? Ah, uh, yes, very much. So I didn't learn how to. I, I went to Chicago with the slide, and uh, when I saw him and the late great Earl Hooker, Elmo James was living there, and Robert Nighthawk, so I'd give them the first present, which was my slide, because I didn't <laughs> think I could ever play it the way they played it. So I didn't want to uh, fool with them, because they was like to me masters at playing the slide. Mm -hmm. I mean, you are uh, a well-acknowledged master of the blues guitar. And it's almost any, you can, you have this very strong style of your own. And also, 
you can just get when you want it the tone of a particular, you know, you can say a little phrase of somebody's, like you do B.B. King or... Uh, what about Eric Clapton? If you were going to play an Eric Clapton riff, what would that be? Ah, ah, ah. Because you work with him at Albert Hall. Huh? See, if you're going to play Eric, like you play like this. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Buddy Guy, thank you very much for joining us. What's the thank next you. number you're going to do? Um, uh, uh, I would like to do one of our uh, uh, songs of one of the greatest guitar players. Hope he'll never be forgotten. The late great guitar player I'm called Supper in Mind. Right. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Buddy Guy, ladies and gentlemen. And how I'm suffering. In my mind. Suffering mind. It hurts me so bad to be losing the one I love. No, I cry, I cry, I cry, I cry, I cry. To look the Lord up above. a witness that you may find that life, life mean nothing to me, baby. Lord, when you got a supper in my Fantastic buddy guy, and although the atmosphere changes slightly because we recorded him a few days ago, nevertheless it was in this same building, and I think the spirit was there. Do we feel that the spirit's here amongst us, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. Yes, I hope it's there, seeping out of the screen into your homes as well. So, thank you for buddy guy. Now, uh, let's move on with the next lovely artist that we have here. Um, they're going to do a song called You Should Be Ashamed. The lyrics were by the lead singer's girlfriend. Uh, from their album, The Heart of Town. I believe they've just finished their very successful Losing Loads of Money tour. Gallon Drunk, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>
that you've been abused And it's just your kind Thank you very much, Gallon Drunk. Um, uh, now, of course, Nancy Griffiths started driving around the folk clubs with her guitar and performing like that. Now she's here at the Albert Hall and here at Later um, and uh, with the Blue Moon Orchestra. What song are you going to do for us now, Nancy? I'm going to do a song by Kate Wolfe, who is now the late Kate Wolfe and the guardian angel of American folk music, called Across the Great Divide. Nancy Griffiths, ladies and gentlemen, and the Blue Moon Orchestra. <laughs> And faded papers They tell the story I used to know And it was one that happened So long ago And it's gone away Yesterday Now I find myself on the mountainside where the rivers change direction across the great divide. Now I heard how the golden 
softly as the night was falling with a question and I replied but he's gone across the borderline he's gone away yesterday now I find myself on the mountainside where the rivers change direction across the great divide It's when the darkness rolls away And it's gone away Yesterday Now I find myself on the mountainside Where the rivers change direction Across the great divide And it's gone away Thank you very much, Nancy Griffiths. Uh, lovely song there. Um, now, I think uh, uh, our next performer is going to do a Graham Parsons song, the late great Graham Parsons. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much, Teenage uh, Fan Club, with the Graham Parsons song there. Um, now, let's go back to where we started and uh, uh, welcome back Mr. Robert Plant, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> very nice. Very nice to have you with us, Robert. Thanks, what, what are you going to be? What songs are you going to be doing for us? Uh, well, the first song I'm going to do is an old Tim Harden song called "If I Were a Carpenter." Seems an unusual choice of song for you, perhaps. Well, way back before Zepp, Bonzo, and I were in a group called the Band of Joy, and this was one of the songs that we used to do. It was a little different then. It was a, we had a free cat section in the middle. And what sort of songs did you do at that time then? A lot of uh, Aeroplane, Moby Grape. I was a big fan of Arthur Lee. He was my hero for well, he still is actually. Um, and uh, I was pretty heavily into the West Coast music scene of the sort of 67, 68, Summer of Love. So we're Can't you tell? Yeah, <laughs> so we're thrusting into the Summer of Love. Uh -huh. It's beautiful because that's the sort of thing we like in this room. Yeah. Bringing well, a little bit of a Summer of I Love. I think that mu that's music's responsibility is to kind of bring a little bit of light instead of too much sort of Stop. strutting and, yeah. uh, you know. Mind you, I've had to go a long way to find that out <laughs> around the weekend, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm the, we're looking for. I'm looking forward to sharing the summary experience. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Robert Plant. Tinker 
were my trade, would you still find me? Gang of hearts I made, following behind me. If I were a carpenter, you were a lady. Would you marry me anyway? Would you have my baby? Save my love through loneliness. Save my love through sorrow. I give you my onlyness. Come give me your tomorrow. Thank you. This next song's uh, one of the songs from Fate of Nations. It's called I Believe.
very much indeed. Marvellous voice of Robert Plant and his fine band there. And thank you to all of our lovely guests this week that have helped the spirit in this room perhaps get into your homes. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much to Buddy Guy and, of course, Gallon Drunk. In fact, a general round of applause for all of them as I'm speaking, I think, and circling, cir circling around. And, of course, Nancy Griffiths and uh, uh, the beautiful band that she's with. And, of course, have I left anybody else? My and Teenage Fan Club over there. And, of course, Gilson, who has added to the plethora of drummers that are here this week, ladies and gentlemen. But I think we should kind of start where we finished. And, uh, Robert, if you could, I believe you've got the closing groove for us. Uh, yeah, we'll start off with Mad Frank. Thank you. <coughs>